one of the best ways to get visibility in the academic world is to actually write a very good systematic review. Why? Because writing a, systema a systematic review is really, you know, the place to go for researchers to look up information on a specific topic because it's basically the synthesis of lots and lots of research, right? So, you know, whoever in the future looks up a specific topic, they will likely go to your systematic review to get uh, detailed information about it rather than read, you know, a million different papers on it. So that's why it can really give you a lot of visibility. And surprisingly, it's not, you know, an incredibly difficult paper to write. And there are very few things that can actually go wrong with it, you know, in comparison to, let's say, doing an experimental paper where lots of things can go wrong while you're doing the experiments and you never know, you might get no data really, no publishable data. So that's why in this video I want to walk you through step by step how to actually write a systematic review from the very beginning to the very last stage. So let's dive into it. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now where I help and PhD students and researchers write research papers for high impact journals. And in this video, we're going to talk about the step-by-step -step process of writing a systematic review paper. So the, the first step really is to, you know, identify the, the research gap, you know, and, and the need for a systematic review. If you don't know what a research gap is, I'm not going to get into that right now, but there is another video that I did. Um, where you can find out more about it. But in essence, you know, there's got to be a justification because maybe somebody has already done um, a systematic review on that topic, so there's no point in doing another one, right? Now, step two is you've got to generate keywords, right? So you've got to have some words that you're going to be using um, while searching um, the databases and you know you've got to brainstorm as many as possible it really is a brainstorming activity how do you get those keywords well, well they, they depend on you know whatever your research question is and your topic is and based off of that um, you start generating keywords and try to think of synonyms for example of different words you know so if, if it's something on you know writing a PhD dissertation then it could be, you know, a thesis rather than a dissertation, right? Um, instead of students, it could be learners, right? And so you want to think about those different keywords. And if possible, you know, maybe also try to ask um, a colleague to, to help you with that brainstorming activity because sometimes other people will have radically different ideas and they'll be able to help you come up with other better ideas, right? Now, you know, if once, you, once you have those um, keywords, you also need to establish which databases you're going to search, right? And it's important to keep track of all of that, of the keywords and of the databases. And there are different types of databases that you could search. You know, the easiest one is, of course, Google Scholar, but there's others like Web of Science and Scopus and, and so on. Some of them are discipline specific as well. So that's, that's the, the third thing that you need to do. Now, once you've done these things, you also need to establish inclusion and exclusion criteria. So that's kind of step four. What are inclusion and exclusion criteria? Well, basically, there's some criteria on which, you know, based on which you're either going to include a study or exclude a study. Because once you, you started putting the keywords into the databases, you're going to, in some disciplines, literally get thousands and thousands of articles. You know, and it would be a impossible and b pointless to read all of those articles because you're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna get mad stuff when you start reading them. So you've got to narrow down that that search. You know, well, what are some inclusion and exclusion criteria? Well, it could be the year of publication. It could be the type of publication, right? Um, it, it could be whether it's an experimental study or a review paper. Maybe you want to exclude all review papers and only include experimental ones. 
Maybe it's a specific type of methodology that, that you're looking at, right? Or a specific subtopic or, or something like this, right? So define those inclusion and exclusion criteria. That's step number four. And now, you know, you can, conduct, you can start conducting the, the literature review search. And when you do that, it's also important to kind of to be aware of connecting words that you can use in some um, databases like end. So you could do, for example, you know, PhD and student, right? Or you could do PhD or student. Um, or you could do, you know, um, PhD student not university, right? To exclude a certain thing, right? Um, so that, that's an important thing. And, you know, when you're doing it and you've started getting lots of, lots of hits, that's where you start applying your inclusion and exclusion criteria to narrow it down. And importantly here, you really need to take notes of everything and, and keep them in one separate place. The best place to do it is just something simple like an Excel sheet in which you're going to write down, you know, how, which keywords you used, on which database, at which uh, date, and how many uh, articles did that give you. Then when you apply your exclusion criteria, um, how many articles were excluded from that and what's your list there. Now once you've done this initial inclusion and exclusion, what you need to do next is dive a little bit deeper and start looking at, you know, the titles of the articles and the abstracts and screen those to also get rid of any irrelevant articles. And a good tip here and something that is recommended in research methodology is to to have two people doing this because you yourself as one person, you know, you have some biases already and you also might miss some stuff. So that's why it's really good to have a second person do this as well so that you, you can combine your results and see if you haven't missed anything, right? So now, now that you've done it, you, you really have, you know, the articles that, um, that you've searched and the next step is to, of course, analyze them, right? And the different ways of analyzing um, literature reviews really depending on the methodology that you, that you apply and what you want to achieve, right? So I won't get into, you know, the, the details here, but it's important that you choose a method that is appropriate for whatever you want to achieve, right? And then, you know, once you've analyzed the data, it's time to write up your systematic review paper. How do you do that? Well, in essence, a systematic review paper is not structured any differently from an, another research paper. So it will have an introduction, right, where you state the importance of the topic, briefly review the literature, you will present the research gap, and you will present the aim of the paper, right? And then it will have a methodology section in which you're going to tell us how you conducted your literature review search, what keywords you use, the databases, the exclusion, inclusion criteria, and so on. So the, the entire methodology. And then you're going to present the results of your systematic review, um, you know, which should be a synthesis of all the papers that you have read, typically organized by topics and subtopics, right? That's the easiest way of going about it. And then you're going to have a conclusion section in which, you know, you're going to um, restate the main results, briefly discuss them again, and then also point out any limitations of your, of your topic, suggest directions for future research, and of course, talk about any practical implications of the results that you've presented. So this is basically, you know, a step-by-step -step approach that allows you to um, conduct and write a systematic review and if you enjoyed this video then hit the like and the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos and if you want to really accelerate your progress and write research papers for high impact journals then let's talk i've scheduled some time in my calendar to speak to you one-to-one -one. and you know the link is to apply is right below and this will be a personal strategy session in which we're going to dive in and identify the challenges that you currently have the goals that you want to achieve and prepare a personal um, strategy that will help you to achieve those goals. And then if it sounds like it's a good fit, we can also talk a little bit further exactly about how we could work together and how I might be able to help you to achieve your goals faster. So if that sounds like something that interests you, then hit the um, apply link in the description to this video.